balls in my mouth. All right, guys. Today, in this video, we're going to talk about my makeup collection, which can fit into this bag. Well, minus a few products like my powder and my setting spray, but everything is in this bag. I did some decluttering and now I have my perfect little makeup collection right here. Let's get it started, why don't we? All right, let's start off with primers like we always do. I have first the Touch and Soul No Pore Bloom Smooth and Pore Covering Primer. That's what it looks like, beauty guru moment. I am about halfway through this. This is a good primer, it's very soothing and tell on the back of my hand and it's very lightweight you don't need a lot of this and it like sets down very nicely so i have that and it smells kind of good too i know like some people don't like scents when it comes to like makeup products and stuff like that but this smells good like it doesn't like smell once on the face but it does smell good all right and then i have the elf matte putty primer this will won't be in my collection for much longer because i'm almost out i'm just working on those little crevices at the moment but after i am done with this i'm going to move on to the next primer that i'm going to be talking about i like this primer a lot when it was like the hotter seasons like spring and like summertime and a little bit during the fall because this year's weather has been like pretty warm thus far but my skin has been getting a little dry so this isn't working as well for me this really sets in very nicely so if you do have like oily skin i would recommend this primer a lot because it doesn't dry down dry out your skin i mean very nice but it's not the right primer for this time of year where it's like getting colder it's like there's snow on the ground right now so my skin is reacting to that kind of climate so this isn't right for my skin at the moment i'm glad i'm almost done with it because it's nice to get out the collection around this time where it is not performing the best like climate and like my skin wise after i am done with this mattifying primer i'm gonna move on to this elf poreless putty primer that my friend actually gave me it looks a bit weird but she kind of she's weird but she mixed it up like the putty textures so now it looks like this so it's not like it's bad or anything at least i don't think it is this is like one of my holy grail primers right here i love this poreless putty primer so much i know that like having like two poreless primers in my collection may not be like the best i guess but like i don't use them at the same time this one will be more used for when I just have concealer and stuff on my face and this will be more used when I use like foundation and concealer. So yes, this is a really good primer. I highly recommend it to people and it's good for like those really porous areas and really just fills in very nicely. This is my primer collection. I have a total of three. We'll be down to two like in a probably a couple of weeks because I do use this quite a lot. So then let's go to complexion. I have my foundation. This is the Undone Unfoundation Glow Tint. This is light coverage. I tend to lean towards more light coverage like face products. This is one of those that is like very nice. It's not as glowy as you might think with a product that's named like a glow tint. So I would say this could work basically for a lot of people like normal to like dry i would say if you have oily skin this might not be like the best for you but they do have like a matte version of this i just decided to go with this one because again with this time of the year it's nice to have something glowy on my skin and this doesn't really clean to like dry spots too too much occasionally it will do it a little bit if i don't have like the right skin prep going on but this is a good like foundation more like skin tint kind of thing and then i have this concealer it's from first a beauty the Benty avocado concealer i got this from marshall's so it's quite inexpensive i have this in the shade 2.5 oh, i forgot to say this foundation is in the shade 435 so beige medium 
So this is a very hydrating concealer. I would say this is more of like a light to medium coverage wise. I would prefer something with more full coverage to cover up my like blemishes and stuff. But it's not really that big of a deal. So this is a nice concealer. This is like one of the few concealers that actually works very well under my eyes. And I quite like it a lot. It doesn't make my under eyes look dry at all. I have like very finicky under eyes in that kind of way. So very happy about this product. So this is my little base routine pairing. Now let's get into powders. With my pressed powder, I have the e.l.f. Perfect Finishing HD Powder. There it is. I use this both as like a setting powder and as like on top to kind of as like the finishing touches to kind of set my skin just a tad after like my official powder, you know, so It's like a very nice powder. It looks white in this pan, but trust me it goes onto the skin like Very invisible. It's so quick to blend out and look at that nothing and it's just very nice. It doesn't dry out my skin at all and this is like one of the products that I will probably go back to over and over again. It kind of smooths your skin, like corrects those imperfections like a little bit. You know, it doesn't give coverage or anything. So, but it's just like very nice powder. And then I have this milk makeup setting powder. Apparently this freaking powder is discontinued. Which I don't understand why because it's like actually a very good powder. I wasn't even planning on getting it again. But I'm just like for those people who do like a loose setting powder. This is like a very good choice. It is very smoothing. And it gets rid of your oiliness and all of that without like getting rid of like the skin like finish of your skin. You know? So this powder has like one of those mesh tops now like you have to press to um get any product out and this is in the shade translucent light here is that it doesn't give too much coverage either like it says in the name it's pretty much translucent it does give like some sort of color where it's like if you're a person of like more deeper skin you might not want to use this i'm not quite sure for me it's more like translucent and it kind of blends into my skin very nicely but i don't really know how it would perform for like people of deeper skin if you were looking at this before they got discontinued that is so i guess i won't talk about it too too much because you can't really get it anymore but if it was still around i would have re recommended this product to people so these two consist of my powder collection now for my brows, first I have this e.l.f. Ultra Precise Brow Pencil. I have this in the shade Cool Brown. It's just that little color. It is a lot more deep than you would think with like the name Cool Brown. So I have around this much product left. I like this product a lot, especially since it is fairly like affordable too. And it just lasts very long and th this is like one of the longest lasting eyebrow pencils ever and considering it's from e.l.f. e.l.f. is fairly affordable I highly recommend these like brow pencils so much they have two of like these formulas I guess they have like this precise one and they have like a more creamier formula this is more of like a drier formula than that one specifically if you like get me the other uh, pencils also fairly popular is in the white packaging. I just forgot what it was called But it's all it's like more inexpensive more affordable than this one, too That one's more creamy. This one's less creamy. So if you want a more cool creamy formula I would go with that one, but if you like less creamy and more like um drier formula I guess I would go with this one more stiff I guess I should say and then I have the Glossier boy brow. I had this for not as long and it's already gotten like so messy i don't know if you can really tell but this is like the only brow gel in my collection so i do use this a fair bit right now at least i don't get the hype it does hold my um, brows down very well 
and I do like the color of this. This is in the shade just brown. So this is the brush. It's a very tiny little micro brush. I like the brush a lot. I like the little brushes that for like my brows and stuff like that. For repurchasing, I don't know if I will purposely go out of my way to get it. But I do like Glossier products a lot. So if it was in a set with some like other products I wanted to try, I wouldn't be opposed to getting this again. For repurchasing purposes, I will go with the e.l.f. Wow Brow above this one. For eyeshadow, I actually have a couple. Let's start with my Inglot Shadow Palette. This is what it looks like. It has one of those cool packagings where you can like slip up, like pop off and stuff like that. So I have like this customized palette where it's just like three different shades a warm brown a cool like deeper brown and then a black i use this one for liner majority of the time this is sometimes also for liner as well oops i just stuck my finger nail into there and this one is more like all over and sometimes i use this kind of like to deepen this shade out a little bit as well and then these two shades if i mix them together will make a perfect brow shade if i'm too lazy or like if i don't have the time to go to the store after i run out of brow pencil or something like that so a very nice palette for me to have this is like a basic beginner friendly like eyeshadow palette right here the pants are deep as hell i've used this shadow like 90 percent of the time that I use eyeshadow and I still haven't hit pan on it yet which is so surprising but I will eventually I guess you can probably find a dupe of this in the exact color story somewhere else like for cheaper like elf for my other eyeshadow palette this is from elf this is the carnival candy one this one I didn't use it up it fell out <laughs> it just crumbled off it just I don't know and then this half of this one also crumpled off, so I didn't really completely use it. But this skin tone shade I usually use to set down like my eye primer, which is typically like the e.l.f. matte poreless, I mean the matte putty primer that I have. This warm, ready, brick-toned brown shade right there. And then a little blue shade that I sometimes use for eyeliner. If I'm feeling like kind of frisky, you know, if I'm feeling adventurous, I'll use that blue shade right there. And then not really a palette, but this is the NYX Jungle Eye Pencil in the shade 630 Cashmere. I broke it because I thought it was a twisty. It was not a twisty. It's a sharpeny. <laughs> that is that. It's like a very kind of goldeny color. It's not as golden as you would think. It's more of like a, a more champagne-y golden than anything. But it's still gold nonetheless. I put this mainly on my like lower lash line to get that little extra pop if I really wanted to. To like brighten my eyes up. And then for other like miscellaneous eye products I do have. I have this eyeliner. Uh, it's from NYX. It's the Epic Ink Liner in the shade Black. It's just a pen style type i don't know what it's called i know there's felt tip and like brush tip i have no idea what this this kind of tip is but i like more of a pen i find it's just more controllable and easier for me love these like nyx eyeliners i had the brown shade and now i have a black shade more eye products i have my mascaras so first i am currently using the ulta beauty new heights lifting mascara this brush wise could be a dupe for like addison ray's um item beauty brand mascara the lash snack one the brush is so similar and it does work very well on your eyes and this i would say is like one of the best mascaras I've tried because it doesn't smudge on me. So many mascaras smudges on me and I hate it like no other, but this one doesn't. And it's more of like a drier formula, so which is why I think it doesn't smudge on me. So I would recommend this mascara if you are looking for something that would grip onto like your lashes very well. And if you like more of a drier formula and you like these like small brushes, I like these small plastic brushes. I think it just looks, works better for my eyes personally. I know a lot of people don't like 
plastic brushes they prefer like the natural little bristled ones but i don't and i have a backup mascara because mascara only lasts for like three months before they go bad and i don't want to test like the expiration dates when it comes to mascara because it's going on my eyes i don't want like an infection or something like that so after this one grows bad which would be like towards the end of january to like february because i got this in november during like the black friday time era so yes i will be going oh shit so i will be tossing this by the end of next month so i want another mascara on deck and i purchased this also during like the black friday times but i didn't open it so this is completely new never used this is the Glossier uh, Lash Slick. I had this mascara before, but I forgot how I felt about it. So I thought, why not try it again? This is also like a plastic key brush, which is meant to like give you more of like a natural look to your lashes. Because like the Glossier brand is all about like embracing your features and like making those things pop. I'm very excited to try out this mascara again. So these consists of my eye makeup products let's move on to cheek products let's start off with bronzer this is the nyx matte bronzer in the shade medium this is the color of that i will probably purchase like the elf one above repurchasing this one i've had the elf one before and it's more neutral than this one and it's more buildable also than this one i mean it's not bad I like a good warm bronzer, but this is a little bit too warm for my liking, but you know, it's alright. I'm going to finish this, and then after I finish this, I want to try out some new bronzers, like maybe the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer, or like the Milani Silky Matte Bronzer, depending on what I'm feeling when I'm there in like the store and stuff like that. That is my bronzer right there. This is my ColourPop Lunch Money Super Shock Cheek Highlighter. I sometimes use this as like a eyeshadow as well, but majority of the time I just use this as like a little highlight. I'm not a fan of highlighter as much as I used to, so I will probably not repurchase a highlight for a little while. doesn't matter what kind of highlight, I'm just probably not going to repurchase. Giving myself a little break, if I miss having highlight, I'll go out and rebuy a highlight. But at the moment, I don't really care for highlight because I get enough glow from my like blushes and other skin products I do have, so I don't necessarily need a highlight. Flexitarian highlights from ColourPop and Lunch Money are like their most popular highlighters and this one is more of like a champagne -y and more natural than the Flexitarian one. If you want more of like a blinding highlight, I will go with a Flexitarian but if you want a more like natural and more buildable highlight, I would go with this one. Alright and then I have my blush this is the undone beauty lip to cheek palette and 340 rosewood this is such a nice color i bought this so long ago but i haven't opened it until just now like today because <laughs> i just decluttered my other glossier blush because it's expired for like quite a while now so i have just opened this one and i'm so excited to start using it i love a good freaking blush i love a good like rosy toned blush i think for me it just works very well with my skin tone and these shades like the reason for these little bars as you can see is because they're supposed to be different levels of coverage i don't really care about that in terms of like blush products but they did come out like a concealer like more before this where it was like the same three different like levels of coverage and which i think works more better i guess when it comes to concealers because you generally would want like more coverage with certain areas and less coverage in other areas you know it's supposed to be like light coverage medium then full like that's what the three bars are for but i'm probably just going to mix it around on my brush anyways i can't wait to start using this this is such a pretty color so these are my cheek products now for the last second to last category let's talk about my lip products let's start off with my lip liner which is during the time what starts off my 
basic everyday makeup looks. This is the NYX Professional Makeup Suede Matte Lip Liner in the shade Sandstorm. This is basically like my natural lip color, just more cool and a little bit more pink, but I love this color so much. It works so well for my lips and it does a good job at lining and like it doesn't bleed out or whatever. It used to be probably like this tall and now it's this big. That's how you know I love this thing. All right, and then for my oldest lip product, this is the Maybelline lipstick in the shade Red for me. I got this for prom of like my senior year. I think this is my oldest. I got this to match my red dress and I haven't used it until like recently this year because I'm not, it's like a very bold color for me. But wearing this like in like the inside of my lips and stuff like that has been so nice. And I love this color so much right now for just going inside my like lip right there and doing like that kind of Korean lip trend. And then I have this ColourPop, you, all the writing has rubbed off. This is the ColourPop Get Money uh, lip color. Here is that ColourPop lip color right there. It's such a pretty shade. And when it's more like blended out, it's a little bit more like wearable as you can see but like full on pigmented it's a little bit more red the red it's just like that traditional red color right there next one is the next soft matte lip cream in the shade berlin and this is just like a more of a brown shade like this is like a cool brown shade that i have right here these smell so good like a like a freaking cupcake this is like a terrible swatch but that is the color right there it's more like a taupey shade and wearing this more diffused out on my lips is so nice and then putting like one of these like more red tones in the middle makes my lips very nice the other next product i have is the next butter gloss this is in the shade spiked toffee and this is also a little bit of like a cooler brown but like a little bit more pink it just feels so comfortable on the lips it doesn't like do that thing where you get like the string because it's a gloss it's more pigmented for a gloss as well it also smells really good nyx lip products are just one of the best at the drugstore along with like melania and revlon those typical lip product companies there is that shade right there these two pair together are very nice because they're similar tones. This is just a little bit more pink, which adds a little bit more to that brown shade right there. But there's that color. Very pretty. So this consists of my lip collection. It's a lot more than I thought for like a person like me who wants only like one product open and stuff like that. But lip products, I switch between fairly frequently, so I'm not too worried. My last category, which is my setting spray this is the urban decay all-nighter pollution protect makeup setting spray i got this for a discount at marshall's it is a fairly nice setting spray but like for me i just think it's a little bit more um alcohol smelling than i want and also it's not got in my throat but doesn't help me like make my skin more dewy which is what i want it's a very nice setting spray it does do the job in terms of like actually setting my makeup down and stuff like that i'll recommend this for like normal to like oily skin people that is it you guys um thank you guys so much for watching this quick little video about my makeup collection and i hope you guys liked it remember to like subscribe and all of that shit and i'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.